Hey guys, what's up? So today's video is going to be a little bit of a follow-up to my last one on AI-powered animation. I'll put a link to that one below or a card above in case you hadn't seen that absolute masterpiece of movement and dancing. In that video, I tested out four programs, Plask, Radical, Deep Motion, and Pixcap, and put them through their paces. The results were pretty good in my opinion, especially considering that all of them had a free option and were browser-based. The team over at Reillusion, who have been super supportive of the channel, said, hey, that looked pretty cool. Can you try it out with our shiny new iClone 8? And I said, yeah, sure. So how did iClone fare with taking my bodily gyrations and turning them into 3D animation? Well, let's take a peek. So to put iClone 8 to the test, we took two different approaches. The first was to take the FBX files that came out of the AI programs, load them into iClone, and use some of the advanced editing features iClone has to clean up the animation data quickly. The second was to take the raw camera footage of my movements and use iClone's new rotoscoping feature to create the animation. This meant taking the footage, lining up the character to important moments in the movement, and then creating keyframes at those points to build an animation. So without further ado, let's see how it all turned out. So for the first approach, we imported the FBX files that I downloaded from one of the AI-powered programs in the first video into iClone. This allowed us to then use the advanced animation editing features of iClone to clean up what was produced by the AI. Typically, we found the AI-powered animation suffered from four major problems. Posture correction, foot sliding, root shifting, and noise and jitter. I'll try and highlight as we go when we're addressing these problems. The AI powered animations are great. We really need to give credit where credit is due. They provide 80% of what you need, but you'll see that iClone really is the ultimate tool which helps in producing production ready animation to take your gamer animation to the next level. So let's take a look at some of the FBX files one by one. So first up is the speaking upper body animation. We start by moving the entire body up to align with the ground plane of the 3D space. Next, we use the reach target function to plant the feet to the ground. Then we use the edit motion layer function to adjust the hip height and move the arms away from clipping into the body. Very quickly, you can see how easily you can improve animations in just a couple of minutes. For the next one, we're looking at the squat. We can really see some big issues with the feet and body posture and angle. To fix this, again, we use the edit motion layer to adjust the hip height, then the reach target function to plant the feet to the ground. The body is lurching forward, which doesn't look very natural. So again, the edit motion layer allows us us to move the body back, fix the hip height some more, and move the arms from clipping through the body. More edit motion layer to adjust the hip height and angle at certain parts of the animation cycle. And again, with the side-by-side -side comparison, you can see how much better that is in just a few minutes. For the dance, very similar, using the edit motion layer to align the body and feet to the ground. Then we use the motion correction feature to clean up the sliding feet as the weight shifts back and forth. Again, edit motion layer to adjust the hip height and move the arms to avoid clipping. And there you go, cleaned up in just under two minutes. Now for the sitting animation, this is surprisingly quite a complicated set of movements, so we break it up into a few separate parts. For the first part, we use the foot contact feature with the edit motion layer to plant the feet to the ground, move the hips back, and move the arms out so they don't clip through the body. After that first set of adjustments, we can see that it looks better already, but there are still some issues. This is where it's really handy to break the animation up into separate parts in the timeline like this by using the break motion feature. So with that, we'll have the first part where the character begins to sit, then the sitting down, and then the getting back up. This makes editing much easier. So now that we have the different sections of our animation cycle, we can use the align function on the sitting down portion to anchor the animation to the root or torso to reduce sliding or floating. For the getting back up part, here we're doing some experimenting using the align feature some more. This is a super easy way to reduce shifting and sliding in an animation. What it does is anchors the animation to a given bone in the model so that all of the animation 
location data moves with respect to a given reference, all with just a click of a button. So as we play around with using the root or torso, the left foot or right foot, you can see the animation start to tighten up more. Now for the next step, we use the motion correction feature again to fix the feet sliding. All you need to do is press the correct button and play with the sliders a bit until you have the desired look. If you wanted, you can adjust this even further manually by refining the reach duration and transitions in the timeline like this. Here you can see we have some small movements that we don't need, so we can just delete them. To smooth out the movements, we can then pull the reach movements like this, so we don't have large gaps between them. Again, some movements that have been generated that we probably don't need so just deleting them then closing up the gaps by pulling the timelines a little bit closer and lastly we can see the hands are still clipping through the knees when the character sits down to fix this we can use the reach target function to plant them to the thigh bones as the knees bend selecting the hands then reach target then selecting the thigh bone will attach them together you can make small manual adjustments as well to further refine using the transform gizmo like this. So that looks good, but you can see as the character comes back up, the hands are still stuck to the thighs. We can fix this easily by going to the point in the timeline where we want them to separate and click release. And there you go, a full sitting down and getting back up cycle, much better than before with the side-by-side -side comparison. Another feature iClone has is curve editing. This is an advanced feature that can really help you smooth out animation data. So here here we have our original AI version and the cleaned up version we just finished. Let's delete the original AI version and make a copy of the new cleaned up one so that we can compare it to the curve editor version. So dipping into the timeline and going over to the curve editor tab, we can see that the animation data isn't super smooth. It has a lot of small undulations, valleys, and peaks which contribute to some janky movements all throughout. We can see that the knees sort of snap and bend oddly at certain points. So with the curve editor, we can use the smooth all feature and increase it a bit. And you can see now all of the tiny small dips and peaks have been smoothed out. Upon playback, it looks a little bit better, but could use a little bit more smoothing in this section here. So let's select that part of the timeline, pick smooth selected, and increase the iterations. Here we're gonna increase it from eight iterations to 16, and there you have it, an even better version of the sit cycle. If you look closely, you can see the left version almost looks like it's vibrating or shaking when compared to our smoothed out version. Now let's take a look at our second approach. So for this approach, we rotoscoped my movements by hand. This method is a little bit more manual, but being able to import the video footage as a reference in the viewport makes things incredibly easy, just line it up to important parts of the motion and create a keyframe, and then iClone fills in the gaps automatically for you, which makes things very easy. For the sake of brevity, let's take a look at just one example here. Let's do the dance, because my gosh, look at those moves. To start, all you have to do is import the video footage file into the viewport like this by adding in a plane and assigning the video to that plane. Now you have the video footage as a reference directly in the viewport, which makes things very easy from here on out. Next, we just line up the model to key points in the movement using the edit motion layer tool, and then set a keyframe down in the timeline. You can mirror and copy and paste keyframes to speed things up at this stage, which is really handy. Once you're done with setting the keyframes, you can then tighten up the animation by using transition curve presets to smooth things out like this as well. To elevate the animation even more, you can even layer in things like hand gestures by using the edit motion layer tool like this. And there you have it, a custom built dance animation using the rotoscope feature. Looks great. Anyways, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you learned a little bit about how iClone can help make your games or animations a little better and easier. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped, and we'll see you in the next one.